This is part one of this video series. This section will document the steps to create the backbone file that will be used in the CodeAssist environment for the rest of this video. The backbone file is what is used to establish the I.O. of the system, as well as the CAN communications of both SAE J1939 and CAN Open. Communications to create a service tool using HF Impulse is also established here. So the first thing I've done is open up Backbone version 2. Um, the first thing we'll do is we'll save the project. So file, save project as. I'm going to put it on my system. And I want to call it a new folder called ECU 0809 Simple Program. Today's date is April 5th. ECU 0809 Simple Program. It's created a .NET file. I'll save that. Okay, the next step, I want to add the ECU 0809 version 2.3 codices. The name ECU underscore one is fine. We notice that the icon comes in the upper left. Okay, so if I double click here, shows us different, different tabs. The general CAN J1939 diagnostic TPDO, RPDO, and monitoring tabs do not require any changes. All settings can be left to default for this example. For more information on these tabs, refer to the Help section or the ECU-XXXX V2 user manual. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the Object Dictionary, OD. Okay. The left hand of the screen, we see CAN1, so I want to add an index in the lower right hand corner. So add index 2200. Okay. Um, So we will leave a submedex of one. We're going to unselect PDO mapping because we're not going to be able to transfer. We're going to need to transmit this on can open. Then hit OK. All right. So we're going to give it a name of pot adjustments. Pot adjustments. 2200, single type variables, access type read write, parameter or variable type parameter. Parameter is what we will use to um, hold these values on a power cycle. RAM is just uh, unretentive uh, memory. And then the data type, I want to change to a word. Right there. It's going to affect the minimum and maximum values. That's fine. Say yes. Okay. We're going to add three variables here by adding three sub indexes. Make this a little larger so we can see it. Uh, the first variable name will be called sig minimum, so signal minimum of the potentiometer. The description will be pot minimum signal. Low limit zero, default zero, high limit a thousand. So one volt. Second one, uh, we're going to call this signal center, S I G underscore C T R. It'll be pot centered signal. Centered signal. This will be a low value of 2000 or 2 volts. This is in millivolts. Default of 2500. And a high limit of 5000. The third one will be signal maximum. So SIG underscore MAX. This will be the pot maximum signal. 
low limit of 4,000 or four volts, um, default of 4,500, and the high value of 5,000. Okay. There's no adjustments needed for bits or edit bits on this. Okay. We're going to add another index over here. So I'm going to select the key on one, add index. This one I'm going to call 2300. And select PDO mapping. Say OK. So on this one, we are going to call it uh, system monitoring. Yes, 2300. Single type variables. Uh, read write. Variable type, this one is RAM. I'm going to change this to Word also. Okay. I'm going to have two variables here, so I'm going to add another sub index and select PDO mapping. First variable name will be caught pot underscore MV, so pot millivolts. Voltage value of pot in millivolts. VOLTS. There we go. Zero, zero, and I'm just going to leave the limits of height in our 65, 535. This one's a variable type of RAM. So when you um, power the or repower the unit, it's going to look at the uh, programming inside the controller to determine what the value of these variables are. And we'll, f we'll cover that in a later, later video series. This one's called current coil one. The description is valve number one, solenoid current in milliamps. There we go. And the same thing, 00 and 65535. Once again, no need to look at bits or edit bits. You know, if we weren't looking at, you know, these are word type variables. If we were looking at discrete type variables, then we would go into the bits and edit bits on that. Okay. Okay, so this is all we need to do. We've, we've added two, uh, two indexes over here, 2200 and 2300. Now we're going to go to I.O. So I select the I.O. tab and we see all the different pins of the ECU 0809, all 35 of them, the, the ones that are uh, programmable or have a uh, configuration. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to um, well, we're going to declare, declare three pins, right? We're going to declare a PWM pin on paid or pin 12. We're going to declare an analog input for the potentiometer on pin 21. And we're going to declare the feedback on pin 35. So if we go ahead and select pin 12 to begin with, I'm going to select it to be a PWM type output. The variable name will be called hydraulic valve. Hydraulic underscore valve. Very important not to have spaces here. Um, when you do the comment, you can have spaces. PWM output to control hydraulic valve. All right. And we're going to leave the uh, default frequency at 200. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, now let's go to pin 21. This one's going to be our analog input. You may, you may notice the use mode, it tells you it gives you an indication of what that pin can be used for. So this one could either be a digital input or an analog input. I'm going to configure it to be an analog input. So we're going to call the variable potentiometer. Potentiometer, very nice. Uh, the comment of input command. Once again, you can have spaces if you like. The value will be zero to five volts and uh, 10 filtered samples. And then finally, pin 35 um, could be a feedback pin because we're gonna run this in closed loop. So the variable type will be hydraulic valve feedback. Hydraulic valve 
feedback. Okay. Um, the comment of return path. Current path for hydraulic valve. Okay. 10 filtered samples is fine. Okay. So when we're done with this, let's go uh, file, save configuration. It's going to create a mod file. We're going to use a mod file later in the process to create our service tool. So we'll create a mod file here. Go back down to where I've got our code held. And give it the same name. So we'll program net. And I'm going to get rid of the .net on the back of it. Save. Very nice. Okay. And close this down. Then we do a right mouse click on the icon of the ECU underscore one and create a code assist project. And it's coming. It was created on my other screen, so I pull it over. So basically, it, it uh, gave us this template where it's got the different sections, the um, system section, input devices section, output devices section. All of this comes over to create our initial uh, release of the codices. This concludes part one video on ECU backbone creation.